to chop that off and then what I have taken from the front I'll tie it in the back so we've got a seam running across the back I think that's the way I'm going to do it because I love the shaping too I'm so glad I didn't cut it off Hello fashion sewers, I hope you are well. If you are new to my channel, I'm Colleen G. Lee, and on my channel I've got lots of sewing techniques and also refashioning of old or new clothing and I have a segment where I show you garments that I have designed, pattern drafted and also sewn. And if you are into that sort of thing, consider subscribing and let's get started. So I am going to be refashioning this gorgeous top. What attracted me to the top was um, this detail here. And I think it's gonna be a little bit of a challenging top to do. It is oversized, I think it's a size 16, 18, something like that. Um, it's really soft actually. And there's a lot of like, there's a lot of lycra in this, a lot. <laughs> It looks amazing that way. So it's still, it's, it's still going to be a top, but I'm just going to have to perhaps, yeah, uh, cut out new armholes, um, neckline. I just hope, I'm gonna make sure that I get everything out of this. It will be a lot more of a fitted top as well. So let's see how I'm going to start with this. I think I have to pull it apart altogether. I do. So yeah, I'll show you what I'll do next. Let me just see. So this is going to be the neckline. So I'm going to have to give myself a new neckline. The sleeves, I've got some flair to them. It's a cold shoulder top, but it has quite a bit of flair in the sleeves. So I am going to turn it inside out. It's gonna to have to be a new let line here. So I'm gonna cut away the back from the front and cut away the sleeves. So I'm gonna go start here and then keep the, the seam onto the body of the top. away and now what I need to do is cut the side seams by that label so the front and the back side seams are now cut away it's the neck, the shoulders now that I need to focus on. Okay, so I'm going to keep this seam to the front. So I'm going to cut this way. Same for this side as well. There we go. All dismantled. Front, back and the sleeves. I'm not going to cut down the seam of the sleeves just yet. Let's just see what happens with the front. So I need to focus on the front. So I've got those to one side. Okay. So yeah, that looks a lot better. We do it this way. 
obviously roll it. Yeah. See, that's nice. Yeah, that's a lot better, that is. So, I've almost got a starting of an armor here and I've kept that. So that's good. So I've got a finish here that I'm gonna keep because they look okay. And it almost, yeah, they they are the armholes. So that, that's good. So yeah, that's looking nice already. Just pull that to about like that. Okay. So I may get the back, well not may, I will get the back of the top. Let's see if I can, oh that's nice, yeah, so we can get something going on here, maybe it'll get a little, yeah that's okay, and it's looking good. So I've got a neckline of the back and that is looking really good. Um, yeah, I need that to be on top. I don't want to, I think that's a bit too much, but I may have to sew it like that. Actually, it's not too bad. It's okay, actually. So before I do anything, I'm going to pin those into position to see what it looks like, but it looks okay. Okay, so a lot of bulk there. I'm gonna to have to cut those away quite neatly. Neatly. Um, very lucky that I'm working with Init fabric, so there will be no fraying. That's a good thing. And it's a good idea to keep the overlocking stitch on the front because that offers a little bit of stability. Yeah, looks okay. I've got a little bit more room on that side than I have on that side. So I'm going to bring this a little bit forward. Timing. There we go. That's fine. Yeah, that is looking really nice. I'm liking that. There's a lot to. Yeah, I've got. It passes my side seams. good yeah it's looking nice already I'm just going to base those in position and I'm going to show you how I'm going to go to get rid of the bolt that's on I'm going to use my seam ripper to see if I can remove some of this bulk I've just I'll show you with that side I've managed to release this little bit here on that side and basically what it is I'm doing is getting my seam ripper into the seam and then just giving it a little bit of up and down to cut away some of the threads that are, that are there and open it out just like that. So I'm going to cut that bit away and that little bit away hoping to get rid of some of that bulk. I'll do the same on this side too. So I'm just getting my seam ripper into that seam there. I'm just teasing it open really. There we go, that's quite easy to do that one. And then just pulling at it like so. And I do the same for that one as well. So I want to keep as much of this overlock in here because it does offer a little bit of stability when I'm going to stitch into it. That's what you want when 
you're doing refashioning project you really just have to work with what's there what you can see so as you can see there I'm cutting that away I'm just gonna that is a big chunk of it and the same here cut away as much bulk as you possibly can remember if you're working with knits it's not going to fray anyway so I'll be able to turn that yeah it doesn't feel as bulky now yeah and then do the same on the opposite side okay and then we're going to baste that in position because because I really like the way it falls and I know it's not neatened here or here because this is the front and this is the back so I've got a little bit of the shoulder the back peeping through here and I've got a finish because it was a mm, I wonder if that's worth trying me taking if I can take away that little bit there where it's finished off because um, of the cold shoulder I will do that I will and then yeah and I can turn that twice and then I'll get a neat finish so I think it is worth the effort to actually remove let me just show you getting close up to remove this little binding that's happening here so I think I'm going to I'm going to do that first before I baste around because that enables me to have a neater turn and finish for the armhole it should be good and it may just help with it. yeah well it, it, it may let me just think for a moment because I do want to put the sleeves back on I don't want it to be a sleeveless top so um, I'm going to have to give that some thought so I'll base this first So I'm going to go along here and up there and down there because that's the shaping of the back. Now basted the front onto the back and this is what it looks like. That's really good. Yeah, I like that. Okay, the next thing to think about is going to be the neckline and the shoulder. And the arm holes around the waistline. <laughs> but we'll work on that as um, when you come to that section. But let's just focus now on the neckline. So I'm going to put a pin here. Don't do this if you're really scared. Just use a chalk or some kind of marker. I'm just looking into my mirror to make sure I'm happy with the positioning of that. So what I would do then is put a pin here, like so. So I know that's how, more or less, where I'm going to be cutting or where the neckline will be. That'll be the level where the neckline will be. It's got to come up here and down here. Even what's gonna happen then, it's, it's really is a strange way of working. Cause I'm a person that, um, as a designer, you come up with all the ideas first and you're working with flat fabric, 2D flat fabric, and you know, you're gonna form it the way you want to. But when you have limitations, um, as obviously you do have when you're refashioning an item, it really does send your creative imagination all over the place, which I am totally enjoying at the moment, yeah. Because I have no idea, I have no idea how this is going to look like, none whatsoever. Um, I have a slight vision in my head about how I think I want it to look like, but I don't think that's gonna quite happen, because at the moment it's quite long. Um, 
Yeah, and the armholes <laughs> are, are here, my, my waistline. Um, so it's gonna be fun. So yeah, you'll see me continue with this um, tomorrow. So I'm gonna leave it here now. So you can do one of two things. You could either, I'm using my pattern block that I know fits me. And um, so if you've got a pattern that has a round neckline, you can always use that or a t-shirt. You just want a template in which to trace over. So I'm going to do that now. I know I said I was gonna free, put it freehand, which is something I would do, but I just wanna help you out by not going too advanced with what I'm doing. So it's just a case of placing it there. And I wanted to make sure that I get and I've got some chalk and working around these sequins here. Now I'm actually going to take it all the way to this point here. Because so I can always cut it away. Um, I just want to make sure that I've got enough to work with when I come to sort out the armour. Okay, and give myself a bit of a seam allowance here. Try and work in between these, oh, these sequins here. Bear that in mind if you are doing the same sort of thing as me and working with um, something that has some sequins on it to think about when you're sewing it and when you're cutting it. So I'm going to take it right there. Okay, this is day two and um, as you can see I've changed. So yeah, we've, we have cut out the neckline. Let's see how that looks. Mm. Oh, that looks gorgeous. Oh, I like that. Yeah, that's very nice. And that's right at the right position I want it to be at. <gasps> yeah, I'm liking that. That really looks good. It's such a drapey fabric that I'm working with. And if you're working with the same drapey fabric, yeah, do, do be careful, especially when you come to sew it. Yeah, that looks nice. I like that. Okay. So the next step would be, I'm going to sew around this area here. I'm going to have to be careful because when we come to sew, if you've got any kind of beading or sequin that's on there, I'm going to have to navigate around that without it looking too... Yeah. Let's take it to the sewing machine and let's see what I managed to do with that. But quickly, let's have a look at the back. That's what's left of the back. I might try and see if I can keep that section in at the back, actually. It's quite pretty. It will, it, it will be a nice detail towards the back if I manage to keep that in. I don't have any other fabric to work with other than the sleeves, but I do want to put sleeves in this top. Um, so that's hopefully by the end it will look like a wearable top. So let's go to the sewing machine and get this sewn. I've got my work under my machine with the regular foot. I am not going to use a stretch stitch or a zigzag stitch and that's because of the sequined work, the speeding, sequin beading work that's here. I don't want to damage it and because of the zigzag or the stretch stitch there is a slight zigzag and I'm better off going for a straight stitch and um, hoping that there isn't going to be any puckering or gathering but if there is then I'll be able to sort that um, so that's something to bear in mind if you are working with something that has some surface design on it such as beads or a sequin the stitch length I'm going to go for is going to be three 
and we don't want it to be too small as well so hopefully that is going to work and it's going to look fine so if i don't get these corners in here i'll definitely will make sure that i will tap those down by hand so i'm not too bothered about whether or not i stitch this i just don't want to stitch into this work here To the bigger ones the smaller ones shouldn't be too much of a problem i don't think i've hit anything yet or oh, hit one there hopefully i haven't damaged it i shouldn't think so these are quite small but i'm just following my basting stitch as a guide to make sure okay Needle down. Now just continue sewing the rest. This is gorgeous. I'm liking how that's going. Um, this is quite long. So I don't want to add fabric to it. I definitely want to stay away from doing that. So I've got the back and that's how much the back is left and the two sleeves and I do want to add the sleeve to it so I'm going to set the sleeves aside for one moment and then I'll set the back to one side for a moment let us just have a look to see how this looks on my body shape at the moment that'll be the next thing I need to do and then we'll come back and then see what the next step is going to be after that. Okay. Let's just place this onto me. I'm looking into a full length mirror, so excuse me if I don't look at the camera so that I can see what I'm doing. And that goes there. Oh, that looks gorgeous. Oh no, that looks nice. Even the shape of the sleeves, the shoulder, drop shoulder action going on there. And it's got a finish to it. That is nice. Right, let's see. As you can see, it's quite long. It's a, I mean, it's, it is well above my knees, but I can always make it, make it into a dress. No, that is nice. Uh, even with this polar neck I like it as well. But I'm liking how these leaves are though. Oh, this is gorgeous. I'm not putting any pins into myself right now. I'm not using any pins. This this is my same position because of the polar neck foot. Yeah, that's that's nice. Oh, really good. Well, fingers crossed. Okay, as you can see, this is where the original armhole was, and also partly here. So it feels as though it almost looks like an apron. So if I turn to the side, you can see how far it comes around. It depends on how long I'm going to need this to be. I was hoping to save the bottom of it, which is, yeah, um, but it's so stretchy because of the cover stitch. But I think I am going to need to cut it to about here, I think, yeah, so that I've got something to work with the back to give the backs a bit more length and also to see if I can get this this drops a little bit to work on the back as well. That'd be nice. And yeah, if I walk with a pony all the time, I don't suppose it'll be. I don't need the sleeves to see how much I've got. See, I've only got that much left. The back. I don't think I can wear, work with the bottom of it. Sequined 
section. See, I just place it with my head. You see how much I've got to work with. Look at she's got a lot. So I've literally basically just got about half of the back. So it looks as though I may have to chop that off. And then what I have taken from the front, I'll tie it in the back so we've got a seam running across the back. And that's the way I'm going to do it. Because I love the shaping too. I'm so glad I didn't pull it off when I was thinking about um, the shoulder. Yeah, that's really nice. Okay, so now um, I need to figure out where I'm going to cut it. Because that is looking good. And then, yeah, I'm going to need that extension, so I am going to, to cut the bottom and add it to the back. So I folded the front where I'm going to shorten the top. So I've got this to add to the back. So I'm just gonna cut that. I'm going to keep just a little bit of that. It's pretty I can't keep all that. But I'm gonna get my ruler. That's how much I've got left. <laughs> but I'm going to have to keep it in because I don't want this to be any shorter. So I'm going to have to join the, the other section to this. So I've got one big piece to play with. Okay, right side and right side. So what there's left for me to do now is to sew a straight line across there. I've sewn both of the pieces together. You can overlock, serge, um, machine stitch, choice is yours, back, front, right side to right side. I like the fact that the seam here is going to be the top part of my back. I've obviously misjudged the cutting off. No, I haven't actually, because I do want it to be quite long at the front, but I don't have anything else to play with. Mm -hmm. So, just thinking for a moment. I'm going to baste to see how it looks before I do any cutting and that will be the best thing to do. I know a lot of people don't like to baste, um, but when you're refashioning, it's worth it because you're going to be making another garment that you know or should last you a very long time. Slow refashioning. <laughs> Okay, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I am going to base along here and base the shoulders. Cut away the neckline a little bit and then I won't cut away the back here just yet. And I'll cut away that. But this is the way I'm going to do it because I'm just having some fun and I'm just playing around now that I'm happy with how that is going to be. Still don't know what it's going to look like. This is part of the fun of refashioning. Um, so um, yeah, I'm just going to baste and see what happens. Just cut away shoulder and now I'm going to do the neckline. I'm just going to do that by eye. and cut down the other shoulder. Right, I basted the side, the shoulder, and then 
I'm going to try it on. Okay, I'm going to try this on. See, it looks pretty already. And that's the back. It's got a little bit of sequin to the back. So let's give this a try. And it goes through, the head goes through there, I should say. Follow me, the look. Okay. Right, what is challenging me now? So the issue is the side. The front's okay, the shoulder is gorgeous, and it's the sides. So, because it's quite roomy, I can bring the front to the back, and back to the front so I can give myself. So I'm gonna have a long, High low effects are happening here. <laughs> Lower the back, come along at the front, which is okay with me. And also the same on the other side. I almost feel as though I want to have a polo neck to the to this section as well. I wonder if I could get that up the sleeves if I decide not to have the sleeves on this. I want to have a play around with the sleeves though. Um, just put them in place and see what happens. But if not, then I definitely will be wearing this top with polo neck. Okay. I've sewn along the shoulders and I put some strips behind there to stop it from stretching some little bit of bias and I have taken it in this size as well may have some to make the collar I think because I might have to cut away let me just get that straight it's a back view this is how short the back is and how long the front is and I brought the back into the front. So there's kind of like a seam going down the front rather than taking it in from the sides at the same amount, both the back and the front. Um, I did it this way because I, I think I get a better fit and it may just give it a different dimension, I, I hope, um, I think. Um, I won't know that until I try it on. So let's try it on and see what it looks like. Okay, this is going to be hopefully the last fitting that I'll be doing. It's almost there, it's almost finished. Okay. Well, that's a nicer fit. That looks like I've got a open at the front and then at the back wait, let me just take this oh wait so what I have done here the section I said I was going to cut away I am now keeping I am going to put that towards the back I think that's just it was meant to be I definitely think I'll be wearing it with polo necks. Now, even the sleeve shaping looks, looks okay actually. It doesn't feel uncomfortable. I'm gonna have to cut some of it away, as you can see there, to even it out and hopefully not have too much on the underarm. Which I don't think I will cut around about that much, both sides. But that is looking absolutely gorgeous. The shoulders, oh, on point. 
That's really nice. Okay. So it's not like I'm going to be having any any colour on this top. Um, so yeah, I'm happy with that. Just feel a bit bare at the back though. Um, sleeves. Sleeves, sleeves, sleeves. I don't think the sleeves are going to be now this it's it's I think it's going to be too awkward I think to put the sleeves in No, and I think it's gonna, no, I don't like that. No. Okay. Yeah, I think, yeah. I mean, it's meant to be like that. That's where I'm stopping. That's fine, I'm happy with that here. The seams that have come in, almost on a princess line. And I don't really mind the back being this short. Won't be able to get because this is slightly curved, isn't it? Yes. Right, and then mm, okay. Can I add this into the back? Okay, I think I might add the sleeves in the back. So there's a peplum effect that's happening at the back. And that means I've, I would have used everything on this top. I'm going to give that a go. Yeah, I think I'm going to give that a go. Yeah, I'm going to give that a try. See, that, see what that looks like, the sleeves at the back. I am going to go for putting the sleeves at the back so there's going to be a peplum and that will give that some length yeah that's what I'm gonna do so I need to open up these sleeves It's a lot there to work with. Brilliant, excellent. Yep, I'm going to have a peplum towards the back of my top, and I would have used all of the top. That is going to be great. Yep. So all that is left for me to do is just straighten these lines. Let me show you. And I'll be using the top of this to sew onto the bottom of the back of the top. So I'll just sew a straight line, cut that off, straight line, and then I'll have a peplum if that's going to go here. And I will put this. No, I think I'll put that on top. Yes, and this is obviously will be sewn on that side and there will be a peplum effect. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm happy with this project. So next time you see me in this top is when it's going to be complete. Like I said, I've only, I've only got to cut round meeting the armholes and what I'm then going to do is uh, just finish all these sections off by hand um, I'm going to be doing some hand sewing but I'm really proud about how those 
shoulders and the front of this bodice is looking and yeah I definitely will be wearing this with a pole neck okay so I'm at the stage but I'm totally happy with how it's going and um, I'm, I'm so happy that I've actually used all of the garments there's nothing left for me to um, add to another project or there's no going to be no waste so I'm really glad about that and the peplum was um, as you could see it was a last minute thing and as a thought about doing refashioning you really don't know what's going to happen um, especially if you um, haven't done refashioning a lot of refashioning in the past and it does help with inspiring you if you are a designer because it certainly has with me I mean this is going to be an original top absolutely original no one in the world is going to have a top like this yeah and all the design elements that are happening within this garment are working and um, which is nice which is really nice it makes me happy it's done it's completed the project is now finished and this is the end result yeah. I am not going to make any apologies about how long this video has been it's probably has it probably is the longest video on my channel but I so enjoyed this project I really did um, the total transformation that's happened is um, ch was challenging and I enjoyed it and as I am expecting it for all the projects that I have um, done and are going to be doing it has enlightened me as a designer um, yeah it really has and I'm hoping to do a lot more um, bigger transformations in this more advanced I mean yes I will definitely do the basics but I will definitely do more advanced as well because I am really happy with how this has turned out it was beyond what I thought in my mind that I could actually get out of transforming one top into another without using any other fabrics or another garment and I'm really am pleased with the results. I'm just going to keep this short because this video has been long enough and I really do appreciate the time that you, ha you have taken to watch this video if you got to this point. And yeah, so this is the results. I'm going to try it on in a moment. Let me just show you the wrong side because as you know, I like to do a lot of hand sewing and most of my garments are of designer quality and I want that to be the case when I do my refashioning projects as well. So I'll show you how I have finished the inside of this top. Look at these arm holes. <laughs> really weird shaped arm holes. The neckline, didn't do any cover stitching on it. I didn't want any cover stitching on it. So the, 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 the Netland has been hand sewn. This has been hand sewn. Um, the peplum has been hand sewn as well. Yeah, and the the back I've kept obviously the the original. And I think that's what you need to do when you are refashioning. You know, keep a lot of the original if you want to. If you think you want add to the look um, to the garment, then yeah, just keep it in. So I did that. So it. Um, the front is it's just plain so there's no cover stitching and I just hand sewed that yes yeah, so I'm going to show it I'm going to try it on now and show you what it looks like This is a gorgeous top. And now it's motivated me to do a lot more refashioning. Yay! So this is the result from that ugly top to this top. It now fits my body shape. Gorgeous drop shoulder action going on there. Love the arm holes. Love this detail. By the way, I did make this pole neck and it's absolutely years and years old. Um, yeah, love the feature here. And I'll step back a bit so you can see where it comes to. So it's past my hip level. And I'll turn around to the back so you can see the back. 
So we've got this little sequin detail that's happening somewhere along here and the peplum effect and these are the sleeves that is happening at the back. So really good result and it really fits me and I'm really happy with um, the whole process that I went through in order to get it to look like this. One or the two surprises because I was hoping that I would have a a, a pull neck effect to this with the sleeves or perhaps with the side panelling um, but that didn't happen but I do in, I do like the sides the side seam the fact that I didn't keep a straight side seam and allowed the back to come to the front help with a better fit of a top so that is a really good result so if you enjoyed this video, I know it has been a really long video, I really do, I do appreciate it if you have actually watched to this point. Um, but if you enjoyed this video, please do share and also give it a thumbs up. And if you are new to the channel and you are wanting um, tips on sewing techniques or refashioning of garments or you just want to watch my videos when I do my um, videos of garments that I've designed, pattern drafted and also so looking for inspiration it's worthwhile signing up to my YouTube channel and if you've been watching my channel for some time and you haven't signed up then there's still you can still do that so I will see you in my next project yeah this is really looking good I'm liking it